Welcome to the Writers Guild of Great Britain's YouTube channel and to one of our recorded events. The WGGB is a trade union that represents writers across the board. These events have brought together writers during the pandemic and beyond. The union is its members, so if you aren't yet a member, do join us and the link's below. Enjoy our event. So this event is called How to Get the TV Credit You Deserve, and it's all about our published, um, created by credit guidelines, which have come out today. They've already picked up a lot of um, press in the stage and in other magazines. So that's really great. That's exactly what we wanted. And it's really exciting to kind of be at the front of these topics. Um, as I said before, we have three panelists. We have Emma, Sophie and Samira, who can all wave to us now. Um, and they are union members and union activists. So we're really, really happy to have them with us today. So I'm going to start off just by opening it up really comfortably um so emma can you talk to us about what all these guidelines are about hi i'm emma and i'm the the tv chair of um the writers guild as well as or wggb as well as being a writer um so these guidelines are about the created by credit um now obviously as many people say tv is a very collaborative medium and should anybody get to call themselves the creator? And uh, you know that is an that's an interesting point and one which could be debated for many hours. But um, in practice, most shows that you see will have um, a created by credit. Um, the exception is is possibly um, some authored dramas. If if you've written every episode of something, you wouldn't necessarily need to take that credit. Um, but um, possibly surprisingly, there is no standard agreed upon um, industry-wide definition of uh, what um, what somebody needs to do in order to justify the created by credit. Um, it's been a, it's it's been um, something I've been very interested in for about seven years, and um, since since before I became TV chair. And about two years ago, we had um, an international um, meeting with with some various with, with various other international guilds. And I got talking to delegates from Israel and from Spain who had done work in their respective countries about the created by credit and who deserves it. Um, and we, and so we, we thought it was time to start formalizing some sort of definition because at the moment, um, you know, in the absence of any sort of formal definition, um, the created by credit goes to whoever can get it in the credits by as simple as that by whatever means can get it in their contract um can can persuade um somebody to, to credit them as that and it and it can be whoever is um the most power it can be it can be the genuine creator or it could be the person who's um for whatever reason has the power to do that so um so so yeah so this guide and of course the, the whole created by thing it's it's kind of the the tip of an ownership ice iceberg it um um it it has implications within the industry um, because if, if a show is a success, everyone will want a piece of it and everyone will claim to have been an, a, a vital part of, of, of that creation. And um, so and ha having the credit that somebody can Google and, and find, you know, gives, gives credence to your claims. Um, and it also, it can be important um, when establishing rights of, over an ongoing format um, so that's yeah, so so that it's it's a seemingly simple um, problem, which is, is actually incredibly complex and leads into almost all the work and the cases that the writers that the Writers Guild regularly struggles with. So uh, I've gone on quite enough for now, but <laughs> but, it, but it's a it's a small thing which is the tip of a, of a huge iceberg. No, and you're right. I mean, it's it's been an absolute wild west. So. Mm -hmm what does a person have to do to get that created by credit? Well, at the moment, as I said, all they have to do is um, get, get it on screen or and get it in their contract. And we, we were talking earlier about how um, one, one of the things which we really want, want sort of all guild members and indeed all writers to, to take from this is don't take anything on trust. Don't think that anybody no matter how lovely will definitely not screw you over because they really might and I think so and you know sometimes people are absolute cowboys and are absolutely out, out to get whatever they can other people I think genuinely believe that they have created something and a writer only did a minor part when they just 
um, wrote wrote down their wrote down their ideas and fleshed it out in 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 their opinion. The writer may feel differently, um, but what so what we um, what we have set out in the in in our guidelines and um, it's we haven't been anything. We, we, we've worked within um, British copyright law, of course. Um, which means we can't we can't just take the definitions that the Israelis or the Spanish or, or the Germans um, have done because we have to work within our copyright law. But um, one principle of copyright law, which which um, is 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 mentioned in the guideline, it's 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 kind of a truism. And I and I asked our, our lawyer, is it still true that in British copyright law, there is no copyright in ideas. And he said, you know, broadly speaking, that is true. Copyright protects the expression of an idea, not the idea itself. So what our guidelines want to do is slightly rebalance um, expectation in favor of the person that actually writes that script, the pilot script or the script which gets the green light, whilst also acknowledging that if somebody has written a very detailed Bible for a show has, has written very, very clear descriptions of characters, got very strong ideas for stories, knows what the arc will be, uh, knows, uh, you know, has done all the details of story planning, and that is, that is important too. But quite often it's the writer who's done the bulk of all this work, and um, then they find themselves um, not getting a credit in favour of somebody who's really just scribbled an idea on the back of a beer mat. So, there are, so there are three principal things, and uh, three uh, which are the sort of a, a, a pitch document, um, a more detailed Bible, and the script itself. And we recognise that all three are important um, to the created by credit. But um, we do think that all th that that the script in particular, um, any anybody who's written a script should have a very strong claim to a share of and not necessarily the inter because uh, you know again if you look at a lot of american shows and indeed british shows many there are often many co-creators um listed but we believe that the original writer on a show should have a strong claim to a share of the created by credit i'm going to pass over to sophie now and maybe Sophie, you want to introduce yourself because i you know failed to do that as the standard interviewer but you are a show creator yourself how important is it for you as a show creator to be correctly credited? And what's that done for your career? I guess that's interesting as well. Um, I mean, I think like, the obvious answer is very important. Um, <laughs> but, I mean, what, what I, I've been lucky, I suppose, in that like, you know, I've, 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 I've created two shows with the same person. I'm sort of working on another where there's not been a problem. Uh, the only thing I found bizarre, I suppose, was um, with my show Blood, like I was asked, you know, when we're doing the final, the final mix and you're, you're sticking the credits on the end, do you want a created by credit? And I was like, uh, I mean, I, thinking that this was like an official process rather than somebody going, do you want it? <laughs> uh, and uh, you know, like, yeah, I mean, what is that wanky? Like, what to be? And well, some people have this, some people are created by, some people written by, written and created by. What do you want? And that was uh, kind of an eye opener for me, thinking like, oh, this is just a free for all. Like, uh, it, it's it's not official. It's not um, it's not contractual. Um, it's just, yeah. And uh, I mean, some of them now, like, I, I do things now where like a thing is offered or written into a contract. Um, but no, I think it's it's really important. I mean, it's interesting what you said, Emma, about we're always being told like TV is a collaborative medium. Like film, there's this overabundance of this term, the filmmaker, and everyone's really obsessed at the minute in the way that they have been with showrunners, with filmmakers. And everyone is always at pains to stress the mad importance of the director to absolutely bloody everything. And like, I just, it's only, it's so if one person is accredited all credit in a film, when film is itself an intensely collaborative medium, yet there's so much complaints when writers just try to get half that kind of uh, um, accreditation and just the created by credit. Um, because I think there's just a, there's still this lingering snootiness towards TV writers, I think, I, I think um, I mean, as sort of contributing, you know, guest bothers. Um, and not creators in their own right. And so I think it's important for us to defend our role 
not only as ideas originators or like, you know, not as only like the bulk of work doers, but also that we are creatives with a vision and and, uh, and that, that should matter and that should be important. And we, we, we should, and I think that goes to other things like, you know, north of, north of um, meaningful consultation um, and uh, our involvement in the making and the production and the overall creation of a show. Um, and I think that begins with the credit, but I think that's only part of the job. Yes, I think the credit can only do so much. But I think um, I think one of the things that sort of it acknowledges is that uh, although TV is indeed a collaborative medium, uh, the writer has been on that show for years before, you know, realistically before nearly everybody else involved um, gets involved. And uh, and I remember once when, when I was involved in a, a credit dispute with a producer and I was saying I've been on this show for two years and she said, well, I've been on shows for years as a development person but I think it's it's not quite the same because as a writer you're you're writing all the drafts you're doing that you're sort of that that is your nine to five that is your job you're doing that all day every day until the scripts are done whereas um so other people who are involved in the development process are um do it, doing other things sort of read reading the drafts when it comes in and giving notes on it as one one you know one of many things they're doing that they're not they're not as intensively involved as we are no it's that frustrating blurring of the lines in this industry sometimes as to what your actual job is and 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 what it isn't and um like uh, uh, and it's funny because i was thinking like because i've not i've not myself had you know i've i've had credit issues as an episode writer where um somebody wants to take the credit and you've got very little to say over that um but as a as a creator I, I have yet like not yet and I was trying to imagine a situation in which that might occur and I was thinking like this sounds like something that might occur more often if I were working for another writer like if the producer was a writer but it sounds like from your experience that like you've got sort of garden variety development executives trying to claim I, that that's when it frustrates me like, but your job is your job is like, very clear and my job is very clear um but I think yeah I, and I've never I think when you work with people who are very secure and comfortable in themselves and in their job and in their ability, they have no need. They feel absolutely no need to take your credit from you. And if they also have faith in, and they, in, and they, as they should have faith in your ability as well and in your right to your role. Um, but there's a lot of, I just read a lot of insecurity and ego and neediness into that kind of grab handiness. I think that's true. And I think obviously there are a lot of producers and, and people who are in um, non-writing roles who would like to write. And yes, great, write, then you'll be a writer. But, you know, don't, but, you know, but write, write your script if you want to, but don't claim you've written what you haven't written. Yeah, no, no, no good producer or development exec worth their salt could, could watch an episode of drama go out on screen or comedy go out on screen, words and ideas and themes articulated by somebody else and go, I created that. No, just no. I'm going to bring Samira in here now. Samira is a TV writer and the co-chair of the um, Equality and Diversity Committee for the, the Writers Guild. And um, Samira, and feel free to introduce yourself. And um, do you think that writers perceive standing in the industry impacts the potential to get a credit like this and, and how they're treated in general? Well, um, I've, I've, I've not created a series, so I'm at, um, um, as a writer, I'm at episode writer level. Um, and, um, but as co-chair of the Equalities and Diversity Committee, um, I, I guess my reading of the situation would be um, that it's all a negotiation, isn't it? So whenever you're in a negotiation, people are looking at uh, the status of each individual coming to that negotiation and your bargaining power is is vested in what your standing is and um, there's also another element certainly when it comes to underrepresented writers in in just sort of a knowing to ask for it in the first place i mean <laughs> there's no there's no manual or guide that tells you um everything you've worked for as a writer up until this point you've finally got a series away and here's your how-to and this is what you can expect um we don't sort of have that 
so you're kind of playing it by ear I guess and, and being guided by your representation or other writers that you've spoken to um, I think that when it comes to let's say you've asked the question um, or you know to ask the question but then either choose not to or don't want to deal with that particular question at particular time because for any writer you're always looking for the next opportunity and you don't when that opportunity presents itself you want to come across as you know amiable and great to work with and you know who's who's gonna not necessarily be difficult and um, and so even if you do know to ask the question you perhaps might not especially at the early stage um, and we've you know talked a little bit about the different kinds of ways projects can come to writers um, I think if you're the originator of that writer very much you know you've written the pilot script it's your original idea you know you've written all the materials you've gone to a production company you've said here you go this is me I think there's you know there's less uh, to talk about there but when it comes to a production company floating an idea to you or you know um or, or coming with you with uh, to you with a couple of pages and wanting you to flesh it out, or if it's a book adaptation, I think you're standing um, as a writer in terms of your contribution to the material and also your name in being able to get it over the line comes into play. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I have a B, Roman. <laughs> <laughs> Very interested in, in, this, <laughs> in this topic. So you can see you go like that. <laughs> That's what's going on. The bee, the bee just wants to know how to get credited on its own show. <laughs> and um, show. So, Emma, as a um, union activist um, and chair of the TV committee, you know probably better than most that there are tons of tackle, tackles, tons of fights that we need to tackle. Um, so many different things, so many different crafts. Why this topic and why this topic now? And I know you said previously that, you know, it's been a little bit of time in, in the making, but I'm interested to hear what, what, what's its importance now? And, and is it really overdue? Uh, yeah, I think, I think it is overdue. And I think, as I said before, it's the tip of an iceberg because I, I, th I think we can, you know, quickly go from, you know, talking about them the, the, the ways that sort of writers might, might or might not get a creator credit to the ways that a, that a writer might um, be very excited to, to finally get their idea greenlit, but um, then might have people um, uh, trampling over their vision and um, not let it have their way. So, so I, th I think it's a, a very central um, point about respect for the writer. And I think... Um, and it's interesting we've had we've had a wide range of, of responses and, and even looking at the chat now I can see a wide range of responses you know we've can, we've um, talked to, to all our our um, members and you know so, and some of the more established powerful members just simply don't see what the problem um, could possibly be and how could anyone not get a created by credit on something they've created um, and, I, and I think that one one of the issues is that um if if that people who less established are more vulnerable to um ha having to to to, to um being uh, not credited for something they've done and um and, and also people from underrepresented backgrounds of of all sorts so um you know if if there because i think sort of that often the problem can be and i was saying you know, some people are just um chances out for what they can get other people i think genuinely believe that they're giving this writer a great chance and isn't that kind of them to allow that writer to get their show away um, and surely they don't mind giving up a credit or the share of the credit. And, um, and, and I think that is more likely um, to, to quite, you know, m more likely to happen to, uh, you know, uh, people who are sort of underrepresented, you know, in terms of, of class or in terms of gender or, um, or, or in terms of, of writers of colour so, or writers with disabilities. So I think it's, I, I think it's, um, it's a very important issue, and it, but I think it just goes, Really to the heart of, of respecting what a writer is and what a writer does, and um, really um, 
you know, we, we were sort of talking before about, you know, for instance, certain celebrities who, you know, whose books are ghost written and do they really believe they've written their books and it's a moot point. But I think people who work in the industry should know and they, and I think if, you know, they should know deep down damn well that there is a difference between um, riffing, coming up with ideas, brainstorming and actually sitting down and writing a thing that works. And it's, um, I think it's it's symbolic, but it, it's a symbolic gesture because it's uh, about respecting the craft of the writer. But it's also material because um, to, to 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 the various writers that you know that you know about Nadine um, through casework that have come to us because they're not getting credited on something that it, you know it can make a huge difference to the careers of those writers. Yeah, absolutely. Um, in terms of scale. Um, John, who you may know, and myself do casework at the Writers Guild. And I would say on a weekly basis, we either get cases or get questions. Um, just today I had one um, and it's, it's, it's really sad, you know, it's, uh, and I'm seeing in the chat, is it repped or unrepped writers? It's absolutely both. Um, it's people at the start, middle and sometimes top of their career. Um, and yeah, we definitely see it across the board um, and, and often from different people, directors, producers, I'm not trying to, you know, um, take sides, but definitely is the case. Um, so if people are interested in getting involved in the union and have things that they see as huge issues that they think, you know, we need guidelines on this, um, what was that process of creating those guidelines like? What did that look like for you, Emma, and your committee? Um, well, um, I started off by, um, as I was saying, it's, it's, it's something we talked about for, for a long time. And, and as I say, it, it, often, it often led into to other problems. Um, but, talk, but, but when I, when I spoke, and it's why, it's why the International um, Association of Writers School is so useful, because when I, was, when I got talking to these um, in, representatives from international guilds, it was, a, it was a bit of a, oh, that's what I can do moment for me, because I realized that other guilds had um, created very specific guides to this problem. Now, the Israeli and Spanish guilds, uh, their guide is much, their guides are much shorter than ours and, um, and more um, weight, even more weight in favor of the script writer. Now, my personal um, opinion would be to weight everything as, as heavily in favor of actual script writers as possible. Um, we have to work within um, the, we have, we have to work within um, British copyright law. And also um, my job is not to just say, this is what I think the guild's, the guild's got to put out a document saying this. Uh, my job is to um, listen to all our members and create something which represents the interests and views of all our members. And we have a lot of members and they have a lot of different opinions. So it started, we, we started with um, a, a small group of people who were, and it, and it also, it became an offshoot of the, um, the guide to um, the for, for and about show running, which, which we launched um, earlier in the year. Um, because because it, we, we realized it was an important part of, of that so we realized it was a separate thing so um so um so the, sort of some of the um union activists um who'd been work on that was it got together and then we um consulted mm -hmm. some more um uh people from the union um and then we sort of wrote this uh, we after a lot of sort of hammering out in meetings and and consulting with guilds um internationally we put together a draft um we then um discussed it with lawyers and um, they sort of wrote some bits of it. So for instance, there are some cases they cite in, in the guide. Uh, we, we, we shared it with all um, the men, with, with, with um, uh, um, activists on various committees. We put it um, so that um, people working on the various guild committees could, could look at it and give us feedback. So we sort of coll collected feedback from all the EC. And then, um, because we've been asking people to read the draft guidelines and give us feedback for a long time. And then we decided that instead of sending the, gui the guidelines out to the members and saying, read this fairly dry document and tell us what we think, um, Leslie thought it would actually be more useful um, in, in, sort of in a consultation that went out to everyone, all the TV writers, to um, create a short survey that they could give yes, no answers to. And so we put that out and um, we got an enormous amount of responses and... Um, Luckily, there were boxes which, because of course, yes, no answers can only take us so far. So there were lots of, of chances for people to put their comments and their thoughts and um, 
and 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 so I read all of those and um and, and that and that was really useful as well so we sort of I sort of felt that we had sort of consulted the entire TV writing membership um and I, I don't think the guide that we've got is perfect it's very very far from it we know that but you know as they say you know you never finish making a film you just <laughs> you just sort of stop editing and say right that we, we felt that we had we've been working on this behind closed doors for two years we felt it was time to put it out there into the industry let it be tested let us find the weak spots let's find what we need to do next and you know how we can make it better absolutely so my next question <clears throat> Sorry, I lost my voice. My next question was an open question, and it now seems super naive to, to put it as number seven. And the question was, why do you think these guidelines are so important? But I think what we can see from the chat, if you guys can see the chat and you're reading it, is people constantly sharing their experiences that this has happened one, two, three times to them, uh, or people have seen it happen. Um, and that just proves, you know, how important it is. Um, we have Ellen here saying, um, that these are going to be a great resource to point to. And, and I think everyone could take away from that, that now there is something in writing saying, this is what is good practice. Read that and, and, and work from that. Um, and you could take that with you, you know, when there are issues. And of course you can write to us if you're a member of ours and say to us, this situation is happening. What do you think? We'll go through the guide together. We'll talk about it. And, and, and if you need us, we're going to be there for you. Um, Right, sorry. Yeah. Writers always work in isolation as well, most most of the time, and so we are when we when we deal with things, we either sometimes we either think we're the only one that this is happening to, or we're made to believe that by the company or the company or the product or the channel, or whoever would have you or your producer would have you believe that this is fine and normal. The minute you have guidelines, you have a community. You have you have sort of tangential evidence by the fact that this thing needed to be created to tell you that this is not, so I, I just, we've noticed this in the past with the, the letter um, of, of, of the number of women writers in the industry um, being hired on primetime shows. Um, suddenly these things just create a sense of embarrassment. And if then in, people in the industry find themselves doing these things that there are now guidelines against, you can just catch them in it and go, oh, what, like, the, you know, this is part of that thing that there's a whole movement about, like, you sure you wanted, and it just, it creates a sense of numbers, so it enforces you when you're trying to play your hand, and it also hopefully con contributes to dissuading people from screwing you over. You're absolutely right, like, this is, some, sometimes these events for some writers are the only chance to speak to other writers and hear that they're not alone, but it's something that we hear every week, so, you know, if you feel that you want to use the chat to, to say what's happened to you and, and, and to talk about your experiences, you're more than welcome to do that. Um, I'm going to ask a couple more questions and we'll go over to um, questions from the audience. So please put your questions in the chat. This might, again, seem kind of simple, Samira, but who is at risk when there are no formal industry standards, as there hasn't been with the creator credit? Is it everyone? Is it certain types of people? Is it people at the start of their career? Um, who, who do you think it is? We've, we've spoken about this at the, at the beginning and it's really, really interesting. Um, I mean, I think on the whole, it impacts everybody, obviously, but I think um, the, the lesser experience that you have in, in in interest in terms of coming into contact with these concepts or um you know the how the industry operates as a whole as well as maybe your naivety um in terms of the development process and how you work with um with production companies and where the 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 lines are that delineate what you know what you're responsible for what they're responsible for um i think anyone who is has lesser experience in of that is disproportionately more um, potentially could be affected by it. Um, speaking in terms of like underrepresented writers, because we're not necessarily equal representation within the industry. So naturally um, there is going to be um, more of those writers coming from those backgrounds who's having the who's facing those kind of issues more often than not. Um, and that's by virtue, not because of, you know, 
who they are, where they're from or anything. I think it's more in terms of um, just their experience and their interface with, um, with the industry, how many other, um, what their knowledge base is, how many other writers they speak to, how many other industry people that they come into contact with. Um, and I think, you know, maybe also in terms of your relationship with your representation, that itself can be a huge hurdle. You, you know, you just want to get represented by anyone. And then, but then they're all represent, all reps are not created equal either. And so you, you really are kind of like, do you have to sort of back your own self up and be, be in charge of what you, what of the research that you do and the information that you hold and, and, you know, and understanding how the industry works. But at the same time, I think there's also a thing about just, I don't know if it's confidence or just an understanding or a confidence in your own self-worth, but, but this is about money at the end of the day. And it's about writers getting their due. And if your, um, you know, if your mindset is that, you know, someone is doing you a favor or that, you know, you're, um, you're less worthy to be sitting at the table, then you're more likely to, to take the knock when it comes to, um, you know, the ask of, of asking what you're worth, um, be that in terms of credit or, or otherwise, but the, the created by credit comes with it financial, you know, gains. And, Often, I don't think we realise we're actually, when it comes to the working with your producers, yes, you're working with them in developing this great piece of creative content and they, they love you and they love your work. But at the same time, you're negotiating with them with regards to your financial situation as well. So it's hard to maybe sometimes distinguish that this is a business arrangement. And if they're not giving you that credit and that financial kickback who else is getting it and more often than not it's either you know it's it's coming out of the producer pool so why would they go out of their way to give it to you <laughs> it's interesting um, that oh sorry Tamara. sorry no that that was it so I think we just have to you know you're in your you, you've got to go get negotiate the best position for yourself sorry so oh sorry uh, it's, it's interesting the, the, uh, what credits are actually like official door openers to this is now a specific role which gives you this deal and like I'd always associated it with the exec producer credit Me which too. is not something that we fight over no one wants to be and really the created by and showrunner and all on all of that is external celebratory terminology that really goes to the heart of like the exec producer battle and that's a credit that I know people really fight for and get turned down for depending on who they are what they look like how long they've been doing this and regardless of their you know ability or the quality of the work and that that's all to do, like you know for me and like in context of the exec producer credit that is the actual definition of I created this I own this and I'm going to get all that residuals down the line please not you and your company paying the rent for your ridiculous Soho townhouse um, office thanks um so yeah so the created by credit I feel like is the is the accreditation is the kind of is the um like the personification of it in a way um but I think I think you're right that it does it goes to the heart of that battle for not just creative um celebration uh but give me give me my fucking money yeah. because it's not necessarily directly tied to uh, because it's not formalized as you know as mm. uh, as we've been saying it's a wild west it's not necessarily directly tied to residuals and royalties but it absolutely is because you know in theory uh, because as, as I'm always saying you know you're only entitled to what you can get in the contract and what you can then enforce because you know sometimes in the guild we even hear horror stories of people ignoring what's in the contract but um you know I could imagine in theory there might be a thing where someone would say oh you can have created by but we're never going to pay you any royalties if it runs for 20 years but there'd be idiots to agree to that because you, because you know that they'd be just wide open in court and you can just yeah. you know that 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 would be ridiculous so you know it's um obviously and one of the things that I think I said it before but I'm going to say it again that we just urge members to do is try to pin down um uh, who owns what and a percentage of and what the credits will be as early as possible in the process because 
the later the later it goes, the harder it will be because when you know when when it's sort of pie in the sky and it's something that you you may be working on full time, but development execs are glancing at, but you know once every fortnight they'll probably be like oh yes whatever that let let her have her own credit but um when when there's a sniff of an actual green light in the air suddenly everyone's going to want a piece of that i'm gonna go over now to some questions because we have quite a few and, and actually amazingly you've answered some of them um already which is great but there's definitely some which um the guidelines do cover but let's talk about them because they're important so um kate says here does anyone have any experience of credit with adaptation is it more usual to have an adaptive for tv buy creative for tv buy obviously a lot of adaptations end up being very very different from their source material which is often you know not something that you know, people think I regularly get emails. Oh, they're only adapting it. It's not the same as, as writing it. Um, so what, what would happen there in terms of that credit? Well, we, we talk about it in the guide and it's, uh, it's a very, this is a very, very um, pertinent area. And it's, and it's something sort of very close to my heart. I've worked on a lot of adaptations. And again, our, our responses from members have actually sort of run the gamut on this from it would be arrogant of me to call myself to say created by to I'm creating this for television. It's absolutely right. Now, I, I think that, uh, that there, there are some sort of notorious examples of um, I, I, I think it, that this is a, this is very much an area where a, a less experienced writer or a writer just with, with less power is much more likely to get shafted. I think there are, uh, there are some sort of some com certain companies sort of cling to an outdated idea that adaptation is you know a case of crossing out the description and and the story's all there you know the story's never there you always have to create the story and you you um you you may well have to create the characters and and the whole world in you um it's a, it's a difficult one because actually you know writers have different preferences but uh, but certainly i would advocate for the rights of the adapter um to um, to, as, as strongly as possible. Um, I think be because in certain cases, some so so, so um, adapted for television uh, by um, obviously doesn't quite cut it unless it's just a single authored um, because you know if a, a single authored piece where um, if if it's sort of if it's an ongoing series um, you are going to have written written by and so you you would you, you would need some sort of credit for the for the writer that's done that main work instead of taking it from a book to creating a series out of it. Um, ideally, I don't have a problem with saying it should be for cre created by or created for television by, um, but some people, including some writers, are happier with developed for television by, which if you can tie it to if you can get it as a front credit and you can tie it to um, a, a, agreements about format rights so you have a percentage of format so every time if you've done all the hard work in turning a novel into a show every time another writer writes an episode um, you will get some money if that goes on for 20 years and I think that's a classic thing that there have been um, there are there are examples you know on tv right now um, of of um, shows where the the writer who did that work of turning a book into a show is not is not being credited is not being paid in an ongoing way and uh, and there is an attitude amongst certain um co companies and broadcasters of oh they've just they've just turned it into a script that's easy well it's not easy and it is an act of creation yeah absolutely and i think it was opened up in the chat here around money and the creator credit um and emma and ashley have both kind of touched on this is um, who owns the format and, and what a format agreement looks like and, and the money you could get from that and, and residuals that you can get from that, which um, is the difference between a script fee and, 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 and longer payments. Um, I'm going to pick another question. Um, myself and some writers were approached by a TV company who had gone to C for, uh, S4C and said they had us write them a comedy. S4C commissioned it on this proviso and then the company came to us and said we need you to come up with the show who are these people <laughs> we should have a created by credit right question mark um yes. <laughs> absolutely no <laughs> so, so, uh, something that i've learned in in, in a couple of uh, in a few years that i've been um 
I mean, I, 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 you know, I've been sort of involved in the guild and, and hearing from people and I get messages from people and just talking to other writers is that like, it's shocking how unregulated the industry is in terms of charlatans, cowboys, liars, cheats. And it's not just in production either. Like, I, you know, sometimes I hear things from people and I'm just I'm scratching my eyes. I like, go, where's your agent? What's your agent doing? And then they tell me who their agent is and I go, oh, right. Yeah. And like, there's that problem as well. Like, it's so, like, I think you said this yourself, Samara, that like, it's so hard to get representation and then half the, you know, there's problems there as well in finding good quality representation. Like this should, like, that should, like that shocks me. That if, if, if a company, if a company had gone to a channel using my name without my permission, mm. I, I can't believe, yeah, I, I'm, I, I'm desperate to know who that is. <laughs> I think representation, I think, obviously, as, as, as Samara says, it's, it's, it's very important, but uh, I think you know, it's, you know, the guild, one of the reasons the Guild is here and, you know, and we do have caseworkers ready to talk through is sort of, you know, if, if you sort of suspect that your representation isn't doing a good enough job, you can, you, you know, you can, you can talk to the Guild about, it. you know, in, in the best case scenario, they may reassure you, but, uh, you know, mm. one of the worst um, cases of attempted credit grab we ever had involved somebody's um, representation, and it was sort of basically a phenomenon which is similar to a packaging deal, um, because there was a conflict of interest there, so, so be careful. Mm. Oh my word. Mm. And Sean's put here, and it's, it's absolutely right, I think the examples on page 9 and 10 of the guide are clear and strong. Common sense, um, they address a lot of the scenarios that we're talking about in, in this chat. And, and absolutely, if, if you take a look at the guide, they're clear examples um, and, and scenarios and kind of what, what in that situation, who would get the, the created by credit. And I think that's really important because, as you said, you know, we see regularly producers um, say to writers, I've got this idea um, and uh, can you write it for me? And, and they try and engage them essentially as a writer for hire. Now, a, a couple of lines and, a, and, a, and a, a vague concept on a piece of paper this big isn't, isn't a creation. And like Emma says, it's, it's what comes from the writer after that point. If you've ever, Thought you had a funny story and tried to type it it does not translate to page okay so what have you created um and that's really important and those scenarios are, are wonderful um talk amongst yourself i'm going to just keep going through the chat and see if we have any more questions please do put them in um i see jonathan has a question about theater which i think is a really good one jonathan however I don't know if we're going to necessarily talk about theatre now. Um, but if anyone else wants to drop any questions into the chat. Yes. Yeah. So, Emma, is it possible to discuss differences between created by EP and pilot episode writers? We are throwing out a lot of terms here, which, you know, um, yeah. I mean, EP is is one of the an executive producer, obviously, everyone um, is. Is one of those things. I mean, I think that that's that might be my next my next sort of um, <laughs> passion project. That's some, something that I'm very exercised at at the moment. That um, again, just like created by credit, there are um, a lot of um, there's a, a, a there's a kind of um, a fight back against writers getting EP credit, um, but certainly at the BBC and possibly other places, which uh, um, and and it sort of it, it, again it just seems to be like how powerful you are can you get it or not it's a as Sophie was saying it's an incredibly important credit I think all these these three these three things are all separate and uh, of course and uh, um um created by EP and and pilot episode I mean I think what what we're saying is the pilot episode writer I would what I really want if this guy did anything what I really wanted to do is is um, really push. The rights of the pilot episode writer to be recognized as creator uh, or at least co-creator depending on the genuine amount of work that the company's done as i was saying before if they if somebody says i want to write i want to see a show about a blind policewoman in liverpool then that's not enough to get them any sort of share of the of a of of of, of concept but um if if, but anyway, if if somebody has genuinely done a very you know a, a lot of very detailed work, there may there may be a case that that they have shared creation. Um, but yeah, EP is again it's a bit of a wild west, and um, I think uh, and, and it's and it's it's a if you can get EP, it is a way to um, 
you know, you get more than the meaningful consultation that you get with associate producers. So if that is very much the way forward, I think, for writers to take control of their um, creative vision, I don't think writers should be afraid of it. I think um, people try to put us off. They try to scare us by saying, oh, but do you know all about budgets? And do you know all about filling in health and safety forms? Well, you don't need to know that stuff. That's actually somebody else's job. Um, being an executive producer can just, it is a lot of work, but it's work that a lot of writers will want to do because it's, um, you know, servicing your own creative vision. Sophie, you've probably got a lot to say about yeah, that. Yeah, because there's there's a lot of sort of patronising gump that goes around vis-a-vis -vis writers and the, the exact producer credit as well. I mean, so first of all, it's worth saying that it's a credit worth having, not because it gives you a lot of responsibility and makes you a magical fairy showrunner. It's because it unlocks, you know, bigger portions of a deal and it makes you fundamentally the creator it has stuff to do with format agreements and stuff to do with residuals and who gets what when it gets readapted into a into into a banger musical. Uh, it's it's it, it, it's kind of incredibly tied to that. You know, it's a lot of work. Are the writers ready for it? Is is something that we see sort of a lot and and um, and you know. So first and foremost, it's worth saying that. Um, just because you have that credit and just because you have, you know, veto as opposed to meaningful consultation doesn't mean you'll get it. Uh, you're very much at the mercy. You know, no one's going to uh, say you're in breach of contract because the director was put on you and you didn't get a say in who the director was. You're told it's a big streamer. They like to, you know, they just want the talent, <laughs> you know. Uh, uh, so a lot of the things that you might expect in your more than meaningful consultation you might not get because that's not how the company works. That's not how the channel works. You know, I worked with all sorts of different producers, some who um, are happy or want me on set every single day, making like key decisions with them every single day. And some who just sort of send you some pictures and go, this is set, do you like it? And you're like, well, I kind of imagined that I would be there picking it, like not just going, yes, isn't that pretty? Well done you. Um, but that it's, you know, totally kind of at the mercy of who you're working with but the most important thing um for me a lot of the time is like am I going to be properly credited remunerated all the usual and and that sounds very crass you know we talk about the art but um I feel I'm very very familiar with being screwed over financially in this industry and you f you get everything in writing and you get it up front straight away you trust nobody they're all out to fuck you they just haven't done it yet and even if it's not the nice producers it's their lawyers it's their bloody lawyers who are trying to penny pinch everywhere and um i, I had the most incredible situation with a colleague who i've worked with very very closely we're, we're very close friends and um their lawyer tried to negotiate me down on my rate and and it's just a political faux pas but they will do that like you know this key relationship that you have with a writer and suddenly it's in jeopardy because your lawyer wants to get a bonus at the end of the year for saving you 200 pounds. Um, yeah, so there's all of that. And in terms of the responsibility, there's this, oh, we've been having this debate ever since the word showrunner arrived out of America, where like the entire system is very, very different. And America's are taught how to produce television from the day they leave UCLA. Um, and here we sort of go from zero to everything. And if producers are unhappy with that, then they need to get writers in learning how to do it earlier, that's on them. But by the time I'm creating my show, I want to be involved in creating my show. And if I have to learn on the job, that's no one's fault, but everybody else's. <laughs> um, that's my feeling about it. It's a bit ranty, sorry. No, 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 I agree. Jed Mercurio told a wonderful story when we did our showrunners event, and this is Jed Mercurio, and I'm surprised he has this story about how, um, I think it was him anyway, if he, probably not listening, but um, <laughs> how he said to, someone oh I need to go on set because that's really not how I imagined it and this needs to and someone said you know who are you and he said I'm the writer and and, and they wouldn't let him on to the point where he had to like ring his agent to ring the director and be like I'm over here can you let me on um which is shocking um just before we wrap up B Roberts has a wonderful question which I have to ask it's so important and I can't believe we haven't already covered it at what stage in the process is it best to establish this with a company is it only when a show is picked up for broadcast or should it be established at the option stage? Or as we see most of the time, I would say a last minute thought of, oh, you don't mind, do you? Because, you know, um, when should when should this credit be established? Um, I would say as early as possible. Yeah. Um, you know, I think, and I think that is what at, at, at the heart of the problem. Remember what I, what I was saying before of um, 
when they're staring a green light in the face, they'll su they'll suddenly um, realize, oh, oh, by the way, yes, we co-created this with you, didn't we? <laughs> Did you? Yeah. Get 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 everything that benefits you in writing at option stage or or, or commission stage, whichever it is. Um, you know, for instance, you might be being commissioned to write an outline. Meanwhile, you're writing four episodes of some other drama. Your agent might advise, let's not fix the rate right now, because by the time this gets greenlit, you'll be worth £30,000 more than you are now or whatever. You don't want to fix that when that might be in flux. But, you know, whatever's going to benefit you, fix it in writing as early as possible, because th that, that memo stage of the deal, like when you're just sort of going, yeah, blah, 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 format agreement, blah, 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 whatever, yeah, is, is very hypothetical at that stage but it is in writing and you can't really go back from it you can go forward and you can be undermined on anything you didn't get there then um, by which point everyone's far more invested and you don't want to quit even though they're offering you shit so you need to do it as early as you as you can i mean we've said it a few times but it's just worth saying again and again and i think because because people are often shocked you know when things are left to the last minute and because you know as things we've touched on before those lovely collaborators that you had so much fun sort of you know brainstorming and, and chatting with um suddenly it appears their company's out to shaft you but they say oh no it's not us it's just you know business affairs i'm so sorry we still love you we still think you're the creator but you know our lawyers as, as sophie said so just really just just get it tied up as soon as possible yeah, absolutely. Um, okay. So I think we've come almost to the end here. And, and, and just on that last point, the one thing I would say is, as a, as a WGTB caseworker is anything is better than nothing. You know, um, emails are legally binding, deal memos are legally binding. You know, the signed contract is, 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 the, is what you really want, but anything is better than nothing. You know, so do get something down, something agreed, um, because doing it retrospectively, as I'm sure many of you know, is painstaking and tiring and takes a lot out of people and it isn't a nice process. Um, so, yeah. So I think I'm not sure if Kate's there, but are we able to unmute everyone and give a huge round of applause to Samira, Sophie and Emma? Thank you so much. And, and a special round of applause to um i'm gonna do it so you can unmute yourself mute all or unmute all i just uh, it is all right if i just say, say one last thing because i've just noticed it a few times in the chat um ab about the hard work and stuff and they're just claiming you're created by and claiming your exec producer credit um yes it's hard work yes a lot of writers aren't experienced in it a shitload of the ex exec producers you're working with who are commissioning you who are meant to be exec in your show are also shit are also have no experience <laughs> and they will they no one's telling them not to claim the credit so get 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 your dollar anyway. and i agree and i agree with whoever said in the chat i don't want writers to take it as a vanity credit i don't think it's a vanity credit i think you know it is hard work but i think you know they're doing it they're doing that hard work, work. Yeah. we're doing that work you know yeah. Absolutely. You, so if you, you want to you. unmute yourself and it's just a huge round of applause to Emma and her committee for all the work they've done on this. It's been amazing and it would help a lot of people. Thanks. Thanks.